Hello, I'm Paul Beck with, with the University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology, also with Carleton University Department of Geography and Environmental Studies. I've got a lot of material to cover in this video. I'm going to talk about the Arctic uh, sea ice, basically the state of the sea ice. We've passed our melt season, the ice is reforming again. The Arctic uh, sea ice is so low, the snow cover over the Arctic, uh, over terrestrial areas is very, very low. These things have both been following uh, exponentially over the last um, few decades. And um, we're facing enormous consequences now from this because the heat balance is messed up between the equator and the poles. The poles are warming, the Arctic is warming much faster the temperature is just um, temperature gradient to the equator is dropping so the jet streams are slowing and becoming wavy and we're getting extreme weather events increasing in frequency duration um, and severity we're also getting uh, mega fires occurring also increasing we're getting all kinds of ramifications and there's huge risks to humanity's uh, food supply so let me get right into the details on the sea ice extent, the area, the volume, where it is, where it's been, where it's heading, when we can expect the first blue ocean event. Okay, this is just my uh, website, paulbeckwith.net, just if you just google it, um, you can find me. Um, this work is not being funded, so please consider a, a donation to PayPal. You don't need a PayPal account, any credit card will do. This just, uh, and suggest a topic, and I'll be very happy to uh, do, a, do a topic for you. Okay, so you wanna find out about Arctic sea ice, Google Arctic sea ice graphs. And you get this very excellent site here with all kinds of stuff. So let's look at some of the things. This is the present Arctic sea ice extent, the concentration as of October 3rd, 2017. This is a long-term average, the ice edge 81 to 2010, the average, this is where we are now. Sea ice extent, it wasn't a minimum. I mean, it wasn't a record minimum. This is 2012 was the record minimum, okay, in September. This is 2017. This is the 1981. If you take the gray areas, it's the spread between 1981 and 2010. And you can see that we're just bumping along the bottom there. Um, for a lot of the time in the summer, we were, we were actually, prior to July, we were actually below the 2012 line, um, colder than the, the uh, you know, we had a colder um, melt season and now we're heading into a warmer uh, freeze season. So this is the, the sea ice extent is the area of ocean with at least 15% sea ice, the area um, is defined um, the sea ice area is defined as when we have 100% sea ice and the volume of course is the um, It's the volume of the ice. So you need to have the thickness in order to get that So these are there. There's different data from the US There's different data from the European satellites and the Japanese satellites, etc um, All kinds of graphs here if you click at uh, a particular one you get more information so um, this is the, uh, the motion of the ice, for example. This is the Arctic sea ice volume, and this is the trends going down, and I'll give lots more information on some of these things as we go forward. One thing I want to show you is the mean temperatures north of 80. So if I go here, I click, if you click on that, you get this link. Here's what we are in 2017. Okay, so there's fluctuation here. The green is the 1958 to 2002 mean, and this is where we are this year. And what we're heading is, so we were slightly colder in the Arctic for the summer, and we're, um, thus the ice stuck around more than a lot of people thought, or more of it did, but not volume. Okay, extended area, yes, but not volume. Volume is key, and here's the temperatures um, moving out now and what we can see is last year this is almost tracking what happened last year and what happened last year is this continued out and we had record winter 
warm. So the sea ice didn't form very well. You know, it was much thinner going into this uh, particular melt season in 2017. So let's see, um, I'll just go back here and you can compare these two data. Uh, and if you go back to 2015, we didn't see that drop, that increase here above the green line. This is 2014, 2013, um, 2012. Okay, so 2012, it occurred a bit and then dropped off. This is when we had a record, the record minimum um, in uh, September. Okay, so we'll, it'll be interesting to see what happens um, this year, what this curve does, if it tracks more to 2016 or if it tracks more to 2012 or something else. Okay, um, if you go to in the in this guy here, up at the top here, these I highly recommend that you look at these links here. I'm going to look at some of them right now. Okay, um, so this is the first one. This is the link, uh, the Whipney's peel mass graphs right here and you can see um, what we can do is we can click in each of these so this is the september minimum um, the data is put right in um, this is uh was updated september so we've got the values here okay um this is the data is the black and then there's all these different exponential fits and linear fits and all the rest and you can see them hitting down now to zero about the 2013 mark, okay, um, or sorry, 2013, 2023 mark, okay, so, um, you know, maybe they'll still, maybe the first blue ocean event won't happen until 2023, let's have a look at more of the data, so if we just go back here, okay, this is the each month, Okay, so the lowest line, September, mirrors the black line in the previous one. And then, so this is September, and bracketing it, August and, and uh, October are shown here. October is this guy here, the purple one, and uh, um, August is, is this one here, okay, the mauve one if you like. So once we lose, once we have the first blue ocean event, maybe there's no ice in the Arctic for a, a month or so, or a couple of weeks, then within a few years, it's likely the duration's up to, to three months. And then, the, so each of these things is heading down, and these will be pulled down faster, likely, unless there's negative feedbacks that we don't know about that keep the ice there. Um, okay, so let's have a look at some of these others. This is the volume anomaly. Um, this is a peel mass arctic volume anomaly and what we can see is here going up here so this is the volume we need to know the thickness in order to get these sort of numbers and there's a question with how do we get the thickness so there's a cryosphere um, cryosphere uh, satellite data it measures the freeboard of the ice but it needs to know the density of the ice, the density can vary greatly depending on the quality of the ice. If the ice is too thin, the, the inaccuracies are large. It's very difficult. So Peter Wadhams did a, was interviewed recently, and he said he just doesn't trust the, the cryosat. Um, sorry, I said cryosphere before the cryosat to um, <coughs> excuse me satellite data. He just doesn't trust it. He doesn't think it's accurate. He's been on many Arctic expeditions and nuclear submarines. British nuclear submarines for the last 30 years or so, measuring the thickness of the ice from sonar pointing upwards from below. And he said he just doesn't trust these, these, um, the, these uh, sea ice thickness that are being measured and therefore that would, uh, the peel mass. He thinks they're overestimating things. He thinks the volume is worse. So um, here's what we get, get in terms of the, the daily volume. Uh, again, we're pushing below. So he thinks, uh, so if the cryosat is, is overestimating the thickness and these, the volume's actually a lot worse even than we think here. So this is a big concern. Um, and uh, lots of other images here, lots of different fits and so on. You can just click on each of these. Okay, so the next one here is the climate graphs from Pettit, okay? So the, here's all of these different graphs here. This is the volume, and then there's uh, sea ice extent from the US and from the um, Japanese 
uh, satellites, global temperatures, and other things, okay? Now you can click on each of these and, and do some images. So this is the Arctic sea ice volume. This is the yearly ice loss, the yearly ice maximum. They're obviously converging. This is the minimum distance here in 2012. Here we are in 20, this is the 2016 number. It hasn't been updated for 2017, but you can see that the, the yearly ice maximum is decreasing and the yearly ice loss is increasing. And when these numbers are converging, then there's no sea ice left. So this is an interesting way of displaying it. This is the uh, PO mass volumes and the anomalies over the last two years. Um, okay, uh, this is a nice polar curve showing, you know, this spiral, the spiral of death, if you like, as this spirals closer to the center, you go to the center, no sea ice. So September would drop off first, and then it would be, it looks like uh, October and August, and then you go through these other months. We, we would then hit July, November and July and so on, okay? And eventually if all these are pulled, it's like an attractor, it's a nonlinear problem. Um, and there's lots of feedbacks in the system that pull this towards the center. So the question is, when does the September one go to the center? And this is vital for climate on the planet. These are the monthly averages of, as a percentage of 1979 values. So you can see the September line here and we're only, you know, we're only pushing about, it's only about 25% of what it was in 1979. This is how you read this, this chart. So you can do that for each month. This is the sea ice volume in another polar plot. Very clearly shows, you know, the, this is the, um, these are the averages or the mediums for different decades here. The dotted, so the 2000s, for example, the 1990s, the 1980s, and what we're doing, this is the first lowest year, 2012, and where we are in 2017. So just different ways of depicting the data. And this is really nice here. This is the, um, so what we're seeing here is the volume decreasing. This is the month, so January to the end of the year. And what you can see is you can see the September minimum and it's getting lower and lower and lower relative to um, the beginning. So I can just replay this again and you can see what's going on. So the volume is decreasing. This is the PO mass sea ice volume one month average. But like I say, it needs you need to know the thickness in order to get this. So this is a sort of a, a variation, a hybrid between data and, and uh, theory. Okay, and the day you need to know the sea ice thickness, and if we're overestimating the thickness, and we're overestimating those numbers. Okay, this is another animation here. Monthly averages as a percentage of 1979 values. <coughs> okay, so it's just in percentages, different units, and this is another one here. This is the spiral. So let's play the animation here. And what you can see is you start at 1979 and you come down to present day and you go around uh, for the different months and it's converging to zero. So converging to zero, when will it reach zero for the first time? Okay, that's a seven day average. So September, um, at some point in the near future, we're gonna have a big issue here. And the next one is cryos, I'm just following down here, cryosphere computing. Okay, uh, this is the concentration data. There's different depictions here. Um, let me just uh, zoom out a bit here. Okay, so this is the sea ice concentration. Um, okay, as a percentage, so 50% would be half ice, half water. And this is really interesting, the compaction area. Um, so what this is showing is this is taking the ratio of the area versus extent. So you can see that uh, as the ice area is, uh, so this is very interesting. It shows you the dynamics of how the ice is, is breaking up. Um, this is uh, another depiction here with all kinds of nice graphs of how things are going. And the great white con, lots of stuff on there. And then you can go to the forums, of course, 
and see what the latest things are on the forums. And there's one really interesting thing here. This is when the minimums are each year. So have a look at this. The ice is going. Uh, 